Hi there everyone and welcome to the scientific skills part of these YouTube videos for National 5 and Higher Biology. Today we're going to be having a look at scientific literacy. It's part of the scientific skills that will be asked about uh, throughout the course but also in the exam and it's a part that people have been saying they have a bit of a, a problem with so I want to try and break this down. So right at the start we're going to be looking at two different types of variables that you'll come across whenever you come across an experiment or an investigation. And the main thing I want you to take from this video is how to uh, find and name both types of variable, but also how to make them into the aim of an experiment. Like I said, it's going to come up in the exam, it's a popular part of the scientific literature of questions, and you'll also be using this through practical work throughout the course as well. So there are two types of variables. The first one we're going to look at is called the independent variable and that's often shortened to IB. And what that is, it's the variable, the, the part of an experiment, which is changed. Okay, so anything that you're changing in an experiment in order to see its effect is an independent variable. And we're going to look at some examples of these in a few moments. The second variable is called the dependent variable, and that's often shortened to DV. And this variable is what is recorded, or it's what is measured in an experiment to see what the effect of the independent variable was. So these are the two really key things, the IV and the DV. The IV being what you've changed in the experiment and the DV being what you've measured or recorded in the experiment. What we can use those both to do is to find out what the aim of an experiment is. So the aim, the point of any experiment or any investigation that you do in science is really just boiled down to the effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable. So if we go back there, the effect of the independent variable, the thing that you have changed, and what that does to the dependent variable, the thing that you've recorded or measured, is what the aim actually is. And that's three terms that you need to know off by heart. They can be quite tricky and they can be easy to confuse the independent and dependent variable, but we'll try and get these in your head through some examples here. I have three examples and you're going to have to find the independent variable, the dependent variable, and then you can figure out the aim for each one. What I'd suggest is I'll read through the first one, uh, you can maybe pause the video, try and answer it yourself, and then I'll go through the answers, and then I'll go through the answers for the next two as well. So, for this first example here, this is the sort of paragraph you would get in a scientific literacy question. Bear in mind, it's often trying to confuse you a bit, it'll throw some numbers at you, it'll throw some information that sometimes is not at all relevant to what you need to know. But right now, we're just focusing on what the independent variable and what the dependent variable would be. So I'll talk through this example here. The first one says, a team of scientists were interested in the process of osmosis. To investigate this, the scientists cut identically sized cubes of potato, weighed them, and then put them into 50 ml of different concentrations of salt solution. 0% salt, 10% salt, and 20% salt. The investigation was left for 24 hours, the mass of the potato was weighed and recorded. It was found that the cube of potato in the 20% salt solution had the largest decrease in mass due to osmosis. So depending on where you are in the course, this is probably something that you've done during uh, transport across the membrane. We're looking at the effect of diffusion and osmosis. But in this example here, like you maybe do during the practical, but certainly in an exam, the first thing we're looking at is what is the independent variables? What is the thing that has been changed? So again, if you want to pause this so you can try and answer these yourself, I'm about to go into the answers. Okay, so for independent variable, if we start reading through this, the scientists had uh, potatoes, but they were cut so they're identical size, so that's not been changed. Uh, they were weighed, and then they were put into 50 mil of solutions. So they're all 50 mil, it's not the difference in volume. The thing that has changed though, is it says here, different concentrations of salt solution. So the concentration of salt solution, 0, 10, and 20, were different in the investigation. That is the only thing in the entire experiment, the entire investigation that has been changed, so that must be the independent variable. Second, the dependent variable is what was actually measured. So as you go towards the end of this paragraph, it says that uh, the potatoes were left for 24 hours, maybe some osmosis had taken place. The mass of the potato was weighed and recorded. So that mass of potato was what they were trying to find. Uh, really, this is also about the change in the mass of potato. So if you said change of mass of potato, that would also be the dependent variable as well. That's what's been recorded. And again, that's what 
the dependent variable is what you're trying to find out was affected by the independent variable. So if we were to term this in terms of our aim, then the aim of this experiment, although they've said at the top they're interested in the process of osmosis, the aim of this precise investigation was the effect of salt solution or different concentrations of salt solution on the massive potato. Okay, so the effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable. So there's three different questions you could be asked in scientific literacy that you've answered fairly easily. For this second example, again, I'll talk through this, and if you want to pause it, then I'll go through these questions again, or you can just read it yourself. A group of students took, place in a, took part in a practical investigation on the process of photosynthesis. They placed a plant in a 500ml beaker of water and exposed the plant to different light intensities. This is done by placing the plant next to the light source and then moving it further back while recording the number of oxygen bubbles produced per minute by the plant. The number of oxygen bubbles per minute were then compared for each light intensity. Okay, so again, this is perhaps a practical you've came across during the photosynthesis part of the course. So you may have came across this one already. For the independent variable, we're having a look. They've got a plant. They've not used different types of plants. They've not used different sizes of beaker or different volume. It's say quite clear it's a 500 ml beaker of water. So that's all the same. What has been changed though is the different light intensities. So the plant is being exposed to different light intensities at each point. That's what we've changed. That is the independent variable. Secondly, what do we measure? We've seen that as the light intensity changed each time, they recorded the number of oxygen bubbles produced per minute. So from photosynthesis, the oxygen is a byproduct of photosynthesis that's being produced. So it's a, a good visible way of telling that photosynthesis is taking place. So the IV is the light intensity. The DB is the number of oxygen bubbles produced per minute. So the aim of this experiment would really be the effect of light intensity on the number of oxygen bubbles produced per minute. Again, fairly straightforward. And for our final example, this is one from a prelim from a few years ago. This is a bit more complicated because there's a bit more information that you're getting told and it's also a bit of a, a weird uh, format. So you really need to read this and think about it properly. But again, if you can pause this, find the, the IB, the DB, and then try and construct an aim for this experiment, I'll go through this just in a second. Okay, so the British Olympic swimming team have a warm down period after every race. This is thought to reduce fatigue and improve performance. In an investigation to test this, 10 members of the women's team swam as fast as they could for 200 metres and then their blood lactate concentration was measured. This was repeated every day for 10 days. The swimmers had been split into two groups. Five of the swimmers used a warm down of 1,400 metres at a relaxed pace. The other five sat in a comfortable seat and did not warm down. So for this one, it's in a bit of a strange order, so it might have confused a little bit. There's also a lot of numbers being thrown at you. That's 10 members of a team split into two groups of five. They swim for 200 metres. They do this for 10 days and 1,400 metres as a warm down. So try and look through this and just see what was the only thing that was different. Okay, And what you'd find is that with these two groups that we've looked at, one group used a warm down of 1,400 meters, relaxed pace, just trying to warm those muscles, and uh, whereas the other group did not warm down at all. So this one's not as simple as the previous example, so it's not just one thing. It's the, see, you could say the presence or absence of a warm down, doing a warm down or not doing a warm down, that is the independent variable. That's what's been changed, is that, that whole process of a warm down. The dependent variable is a bit more simple because you look earlier on and it says that their blood lactate concentration was measured, so we've seen how much lactate was in their blood depending on if they warmed down or not. So again, this presence or absence of a warm down uh, for the IV and the blood lactate levels or concentration for their DV means that the aim of this investigation was that uh, the effect of a warm down on the blood lactate concentration of swimmers, something like that, using the IV's effect on the DV. That's the last example. Um, I hope you find this quite useful. I know it's something that sometimes people find really hard to get in their heads. Uh, if you have found this useful or if you would like some more examples of these, I can get some more examples up or even leave a document for people to use. Um, also for scientific skills, a lot of people have been uh, asking for more work on the skills part of the course. If there's anything specific, for example, the numeracy side, 
uh, understanding graph, scientific literacy we're touching on now, please leave a comment and let me know so I can get on with some of those as well. Okay, so thanks very much for listening, folks. Hope you found that useful and we'll get some more scientific skills up as well.